What are you doing? Nothing. Guess what day it is? Wednesday the 8th. <laughs> no, it's play day. Play day. Yeah. Is that exciting? Uh, yeah. What are we playing? <laughs> <laughs> We're playing with toys. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Play Day. My favorite day. They don't come near enough. And my problem is I want to get a lot of stuff to show. I like getting a stack of things. My problem this time around is I got too much stuff. It, it came in slowly, so I thought, oh, I need to put it here, put it here. And I looked at the stack the other day, and oh, I actually have more stuff than what I'm going to show today. If you sent me something, don't worry, it will be in a play day. I, this is just the stuff that was on top. I grabbed it, threw it in here. But there is another play day quickly coming. Besides people sending me stuff, I also have some head casts that I need to paint up because I'm lazy as hell. Do some tweaks, do some modifications, I, and full. I actually have a full-on custom planned. I couldn't wait any longer. I had to have a play day. First up, a simple little head swap. I am a huge Matt Hardy fan from all the way back in the 90s. So when Mattel put out Awoken Matt Hardy, I had to grab it, but the original head look like this. And I was going to be content and just live with it, but somebody hit me up and said, hey, the basics have a much better head, so if you swap, you get the elite body, better head. I don't know what I'm doing here. This is kind of, yeah. And this is all of the, yes! But Mattel being Mattel, you have to heat them up and pop them off. And this will do me until uh, Jazzwares gets their AEW version out. Lots of people working on their G.I. Joes, trying to make them more classic. And I found this shirt on eBay. And for the life of me, I cannot remember the name. Hopefully by the time this video goes up, I'll have it right here. But it was just this tan color. And then I came in with a green Sharpie and drew in the camouflage pattern. You can see where I tested different colors against it. It's a little bit small. It likes to ride up, show some belly. So sometime I'll have to get in there and like attach it or secure it somehow right there. But it just gives Block a more classic look. Now. I'm hunting down some kind of straps to go up over his shoulder, some kind of belt. Maybe if I get a thick belt, it'll hide the belly showing. And in a future play day, I'll come back and paint the armor up. I've seen people doing this, and it looks fantastic, knocking out that gold. But I also like how Roadblock comes, so I had to get another keep the vest on him for a version 2 Roadblock, but I wanted to change the head up a bit. And this is the Mezco 112 Collective Green Lantern John Stewart. Skin tones are slightly off, but in regular light, out on the shelf, it's not as apparent. And yes, the eyes are a deep piercing green, but it ties it into the vest, I think. I may need to drop it just a tad bit more. Yeah, this works for me. And it differentiates the two roadblocks. Not to stop at just the shirt, I had to go in and get Roadblock a more classic looking gun. This is the Rambo Series 50 caliber machine gun surefire ground support. And make sure it says that because there's two versions of the 50 cal. This one comes with the base and the handles, and that's the important part. The other version of this doesn't have these handles on the back. This is from 1986, but I was able to find this on eBay fairly easy. But I've also seen a lot of other people doing this, and it may be harder to get as time goes on. Still need to do some kind of modifying to hold, well, I don't know, maybe I can get his hand up around that barrel. Well, I'll be damned, it does go around the barrel. <laughs> Definitely gives it that old school flavor. But I do have the little Armory 50 cal that I haven't built yet. That's for a future play day. <laughs> There's so much stuff to look at. The hunt is still on for a good stand-in timber to go with your snake eyes, and this is my latest acquisition. This is the Papo Polar Wolf, and I picked it up fairly cheap on Amazon. It's less work than a lot of the other wolves I've seen. Most of them are like a, a grayish color. You have to throw some paint on it, or the eyes look a bit silly. This, the shading is not bad, and it looks like a polar wolf. Fairly unintimidating in the pose. Definitely not ferocious, but just standing there, I don't know. It it's, has that same calm demeanor that I think of Snake Eyes having. Not the biggest wolf you can get. I feel like it should be slightly bigger, but again, I'm not going for rip your face off timber. I'm going for quiet companion timber. Of course, this may be more realistic to how a wolf would look next to a dude. I, I want slightly bigger, but this will work for now. I didn't go in on the Mezco Captain Marvel, but I did have quite a few Marvel Legends Captain Marvels, so I got on eBay grabbed one of the Mezco heads, and it pops right onto the Marvel Legends body. And I did that because it looks better than what Marvel Legends gave us. Sure, not the most exciting head sculpt, but way more accurate, more realistic. I love the curls to the hair. It doesn't sit down as low as I'd like it to. It needs to go down just slightly more so the hair is resting on the shoulders. But she's a soldier. No nonsense. Get it done. 
I, I'm okay with this. But that reminded me of this. I may have shown this swap in my review of the Mezco 112th Collective Netflix Daredevil, but again, the Mezco heads pop right onto the Marvel Legends neck balls, and I feel like this has a little more personality to it than the original head on this body. It matches right up, and it looks fantastic. It definitely spruces the figure up if you're looking for some kind of alternate head for your Daredevil. I can't speak to the accuracy to the show, but at the same time, in my head, this is Netflix Daredevil. I did a full review on the Plunderlings Fwush the other day, and in that same package was the Plunderlings Fawn. Now this didn't actually fund during the Kickstarter, but they went ahead and made it anyway because it's such an awesome design. It's just a fun damn figure. I mean, this is one of the factory test shots. It's obviously not painted yet, but just messing around with this, I need more plunderlings. They are so fun to just mess around with. The fawn has hooves, unlike the rest of the plunderlings that have big old feet. It makes it slightly more hard to stand up, but at the same time, it's flat, it's round, it's not a huge deal. You mess around with it for a second and you're good to go. On top of that, the head has a lot of differences too, like the earrings in the ear, the horns coming up. It just adds something different to the plunderling design. And there ain't nothing wrong with that because, oh my, I could mess with this all day. So much personality, so mischievous. They're gonna be all over my shelves. Like I said, these didn't get funded during the Kickstarter, but they are making them, but they should have them up for sale once they get the full run made and, you know, to the warehouses ready to ship. I'm always on the hunt for easy, durable dioramas. Something I can just throw into the booth, take pictures, throw it back out. And a lot of times that's hard to do without getting too elaborate with it. But these 12 world structures, where it's just a piece of a building or some kind of flooring or something, they're right up my alley. This is the TW1921 and I picked this up on Empire Toy Shop. And basically it's just a piece of polystone or, or shit, I don't know materials. It's hollow, so it's not polystone. I don't know what this is made of. When I first pick it up, I think, oh, that's gonna be heavy and it's not bad at all, but the detail Oh man, you think every little rock is a separate piece down here. And then the stonework coming up to a facade that's just battle torn and then you can see the rocks underneath. Slight stairway over here for, you know, whatever you want to do. And then you turn it around, there's still more of that detail. It's, it's just reversed, but you have a smaller type inside room if you want to use that side. And even the roof is a platform flat spot where you can stand figures up on top. Yeah, you'll have to put something behind it or take your shot to where it doesn't show quite everything. I just wanted something that I can throw in here, take some quick pictures, get it out. And this gives me all kinds of angles. You just turn it and it's something different. Of course, these stairs don't go anywhere, so <laughs> maybe not this side, but this side and this side and even on top. Love the texture. You guys know me. I am always in the mood to spruce up some Star Wars figures, so I keep a running search on eBay for custom heads. And with Rogue One figures, I'm to the point where I think Hasbro's not gonna come back and redo these guys. So I am slowly but surely making my way through that cast. This is a painted head cast from Camaro Dude 1967 on eBay. It's actually the Hasbro sculpt, which with this paint job, the factory paint job, and ooh, not good. But you throw on some nice skin tones, some shading, some paint, yeah. It spruces it up a lot. This makes me completely happy. I'm not gonna stand at the next, well, if Comic-Cons are ever a thing again, stand there going, hey, can you redo all the Rogue One guys? Now I can focus all my attention on going, hey, can you make us a Bodhi Rook, please? <laughs> but now I need to get the Chirrut. You guys know Daredevil 19, he does reviews here on YouTube, and he also makes a lot of custom capes. So I had to grab a Batman cape because while Mezco does a great job with their capes and how they drape and how they fold, I like something with a bit more character. So I hit up Daredevil and he had this amazingly awesome wired cape. I mean, that's just me messing around here without even looking. I'm looking at the camera. I'm not even looking at the figure and nailed it. On the two outside edges, it's nice heavy wire. On the two inside uh, pleats, is there two? No, there's four in the middle. He uses a lighter wire that doesn't get in the way because if you use the heavy wire on the whole thing, it'd be harder to manipulate around. The heavier one on the outside does its job of holding the weight, and then you can bring in and do subtle little things with the inside ones. I just wanted something to spruce up this Batman because I love this look with the gray and the black, and now I have an awesome looking cape for it. Don't get me wrong, I like a big fluffy sticking out cape, maybe coming over the shoulders, but sometimes I want it to lay flat on the back, not break the silhouette, and then drape out at the bottom. But I had originally hit up Daredevil 
to get a new cape for my SH Figuarts Mandalorian. This is the original cape. Just flat and lifeless and can't do anything with it. Looks like a Lego cape hanging off the back of a $70 action figure. And I had already gotten one of these before for one of my Black Series Mandalorians. And it's the same thing. Just nice heavy wire. You can put it where you want to. It looks like a cape. It flows down. It's just fantastic looking. Now on the SH figure art, you have to pry up the chest armor a bit, take the old cape off, and what I did here was keep it pried out, put the new cape on, and then squeezed it shut. Well, I say shut, it just pinches it between and it keeps the cape on. So the Batman cape, the Mandalorian cape, hit up uh, DD19Customs on Instagram. But you'll notice something else different here new head. John Walker Customs came out with a new size Mandalorian head. Here's the original helmet on the figure and you can see the size difference. Some people say that Mando's helmet is more skin tight than Boba Fett's and Jango's and it's supposed to be smaller. And I'm okay with that. Enjoy your toys. <laughs> but for me, it didn't look right. And even with the new proportional looking helmet, it's still smaller than the Mafex Boba Fett helmet. Whereas the bodies are the same size. Except for the shitty way they did the gun mount on the back and the holster on the hip, this fixes most of the things I do not like about the SH Figure Arts Mandalorian. I mean, look at that. <laughs> That's crazy. This, oh yeah. But if you do decide to order a new head from John Walker Customs, make sure to order the small DJ helmet. The small DJ helmet is more suited for the SH Figure Arts figure. But also from John Walker Customs, here is the Star Wars 1313 Boba Fett. I didn't know I needed this until I saw it. Star Wars 1313 was a game that was in development, I guess, and then didn't come out. And this was Boba Fett's design in the game. He made this out of the Star Wars model kit and you can see <laughs> that he added some different things to it. First up, holy moly, the chrome look to the helmet. It's so deep and rich and that carries down to the knee pads too. It's a new belt with a sash underneath down at the legs. It's wrapped in this material and it's not just loose material. Somehow it's glued on there as a texture. He's got a cloth cape instead of the plastic one and then that gun strapped to his back which is you know you could never have enough weapons. But then just the paint job on top of that with the weathering and the colors. Oh man. The helmet's almost pristine but then there's wear to the chest armor and the gauntlets and the shoulder pads i love the look of this thing and i hadn't ever paid attention to 1313 boba fett before this is amazing looking and he sent extra hands and stuff but even the pose this is how i pulled it out of the box it was like oh and this is how it'll stay it goes on the shelf and just looks like a badass. <laughs> Get in frame. Here's one of those things where I went to the post office not expecting to see anything in the P.O. box, and this was in there. This is from Junior Mogul Toys. It's essentially a little baby Yoda, I mean the child. They sculpted in wax and then cast out in plastic. And the paint job on top of it, the green is so translucent looking, like it's skin. I love the detail sculpt work. There's some weathering to it, the brown on the robes. It's just a neat little thing, and I mean little. I actually lost this a couple times while planning this. It's been a while since the last play day. I get a stack of stuff and then I think, oh, mm -hmm, where'd it go? And it is smaller than the Hasbro Black series Baby Yoda. Still looks good next to Mando, so no complaints here. It looks fantastic. Now I'm a huge fan of Casting Cave and I hit that side up every other day to see what new stuff pops up. I especially love the pre-painted stuff because <laughs> I've become a lazy bastard in my old age. And when I saw this pop up, I thought, oh, I need a more classic Hawkeye head for my Marvel Legends Hawkeye. I like how the sheen of the purple matches the, well, this is not supposed to be a robot arm, but <laughs> they reuse this arm for Bucky. It's more supposed to be an arm guard for the bow. That, along with some of the other details on here, it's not a perfectly West Coast Avengers type Hawkeye. This is the classic flavor I've been looking for in a Clint Barton. I mean, during those West Coast Avengers days, he was such a cocky guy, always at odds with Captain America, and I, I feel like this brings it across. Speaking of cocky though, while I was on Casting Cave, I noticed he had a new smirky Han Solo head. This is the SH Figure Arts body, and it looks so good. I love the head that I have had from Casting K for a while, but this is just, I don't know, it's just a different look. I, and I changed it up a bit. I'm going to display this one with the pilot gloves. This one's more out in the woods, Han. In fact, that kind of looks like Battlefront 2, doesn't it, PlayStation? Hmm. Either way, you can never have too many Hans, or at least Han options, right? I mean... Yeah. And then finally, I grabbed this from R2K Troopers on Instagram. I've gotten a couple of things from him before, and I've always been happy. But this, 
Holy shit. This thing. It's getting insane what you can do with a 3D printer. He sells this as a kit. It comes in several different pieces, and it doesn't come with the floaty piece on bottom. That's actually from the Hasbro Black Series Land Speeder. And when he first mentioned that, I thought, but I need my Land Speeder floating. But then I got this in the mail, and I was like, screw that Land Speeder. This needs to float and go in the display. These side pieces are actually attached to the rod going through to hold the gun in place, so they rotate independently of the cannon. It's slightly loose, but at the same time, I'm gonna have somebody on the back here as this floats along. He did the paint job on this for me, and it's so subtle, but so beautiful. There's some browns, there's some, maybe some rust, some dirt, right here where it's caked a bit more heavy because But the gray overspray just does so much to bring out the details. I mean, look at the holes and the barrels. The barrels are all individual tubes, not one big chunk of plastic or resin or whatever this does. You can go side to side with it, and then of course up and down. <laughs> and look at that, there's the Star Wars Black Series Mando on the back. It's a bit awkward to get him to hang, and I'm afraid to get too crazy with these printed handles sticking off the back. I'm sure if I put the SH Figure Arts where it has more pose to it, I can get them a bit more up, but man, yeah, he's gonna terrorize the shelf with this thing. So at the end of the day, another great play day. Some little flourishes, some upgrades, some little tweaks, and man, it makes action figures so fun. And some of them may have not even needed it. I mean, the Marvel Legends, Captain Marvel, it's perfectly adequate. And I like the vest on Roadblock so much, I got a second one to keep one in the vest. Some customs, like painted heads or full-on custom or 3D printed, man, it just adds so much to the shelf. Because there are a lot of talented people out there, and I just, I love having stuff from people that just pour their heart and souls into things. They do it because they love the properties or they love customizing or they love action figures, toys, whatever. There's love in there and that's the, that's the key, <laughs> love. Most of the links to these people's work are down in the description below, so you show some love. Go buy a custom head or commission a custom or just go look at stuff. Hell, I mean, just the act of looking at it, that's a form of love too. It's all art. It's all hobby, it's all fun. Yeah. So if you enjoyed the play day, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be playing, <laughs> I'll catch you on the whoosh. <laughs>